finger. So let me quickly explain what I'm doing here. I'm preparing the ground before I bring my rebar in. That way I'm leveling it off to a height that will give me a good seven inches thick concrete pad, new pad in here from right to left, front to back, right? I want a good consistent thickness across the whole pad. Not what they did originally where they just took a dozer in here or piece of equipment, leveled it by eye and then poured concrete on it. The original pad has places that are probably 10 inches thick in some places and four in the other. Just a bad job. I don't want that. So using a laser, took a reference off the original pad, comparing that to what I have on the ground. So in relation to that zero, I'll have at least seven inches thick on my concrete pad. In short, I'm leveling off the ground, you know, in a nutshell, that's all. And taking my old dirt and pouring it out in the trench beside the shop. Oh, goodness. So hopefully you can see the flash of that laser on 3 foot 11. Now that is 7 inches lower than my reference point that I got there. And you know, if I get a few inches, a couple inches lower in spots, that's fine. I just don't want any spot that's higher, like this high spot here, which in reality, we're not worried about the little spots. We're worried about the average of 4 foot or 3 foot 11. That's what we want. So we're just scratching around on the dirt until we get that and then taking the dirt outside. So there is a lot of ground here that needs moved, although it may not look like it. Really a nice skid steer with a toothed bucket to drag over this. You can't scoop it because all the rocks that are in it, I mean, they're everywhere. The bucket, a smooth bucket just slides on it. But I think if you had a bucket with teeth and you just, you know, raked this, you'd speed up the process quite a bit. I don't have that. So I'm just going to continue doing what I'm doing, which is uh, not the fastest, but it works. Little eel. You better hide the hunting bears. They go. So when it comes to moving ground, this is one of my favorite tools. This is my dad's. It's a number three True Temper Matic is what I call it. I have one of these, but the one that I have is slightly bigger than this and a little heavier. And this one is just the right weight for me. Obviously, you'd have to find one that just fits well for you. To me, this tool feels light, but that allows me to work with it quite a bit. If I swap this one for my other one, it wears me out a lot quicker. And this one, I can almost work all day with it. I dug the footer with this thing, you know, a lot of it. Chopped roots, pried out rocks, I mean, you name it. On the other side of the shop, you know, it helped dig out that pathway with it as well. So my dad's moved a lot of earth with this, and so have I. And it's a great tool.
So instead of grabbing this story pole every time I want to check the ground, I'm just going to use the hoe here. Right, that's the same thing. I can see it on there. So I can just, you know, check, work the ground, set the hoe down. It's quicker. So the ground's roughly graded. That took most of a day. All that stone in the ground just took what would be a relatively easy job and turned it into a you know, pretty labor-intensive job. Just good seven inches difference between my reference point and the top of the ground here. I will have to bring in a little rock in some of the lower areas, but you know, roughly graded, right? So I need to remove this stone that's protruding out from under the existing pad here, and I can't jackhammer it because I'll risk breaking the pad that's here. You could probably leave it, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna remove that. So I'm gonna cut it with a wet saw, but before I can do that, I gotta repair one of my water hoses that ruptured uh, down at the house. And uh, I got the connect. I just went to town, got the connections for that, and also picked up some other stuff that I'll share with you real quick. Then we'll start preparing this area for concrete. So that was quite the leak, as you can imagine. This old water hose really needs replaced, but you know, a water ho good water hose is expensive, and a cheap connector is cheap. So we opted to go cheap. I've got enough expenses at the moment. Why am I even taking that off? a problem. Hmm. Is it the same size? It is. Man. Oh, come on. I hope this will work. I need to heat this up. So that is definitely bigger than the hose. Hopefully it'll expand enough. This is an awesome heat gun that was given to me by a viewer um, some time ago. Just a industrial uh, duty, at least it seems type heat gun. Well, heat makes all the difference in the world. So there we go. And you just struggled with that for an hour without some heat on it. There we go. That'll work. So while I was in town, I picked up the rest of the material that I needed to put gutters on this lower side of the shop. And all in all, both sides of the shop, less than $260 for everything that I needed to put gutters on this shop. That's over 100 feet of gutters, all the accessories, less than $260. Bucks. You gotta do it yourself, but really that's not that bad for you know, putting gutters on a building.
So I'm hoping that I got all the way through that. I think that I did. I'm not 100 percent for sure. Oh yeah. I just didn't want that for probably obvious reasons. Just didn't want that up under my new section of concrete. It's limestone. That's really all there is around here is limestone. Put that on the list. measuring stick.
you're not going to pull those out of there. That's just a half inch hole with a half inch piece of rebar driven in it. No epoxy, no nothing. It's not needed on these. See that wearing me out by the time I get to the end. So in last week's video, I mentioned that I had a new piece of equipment for the shop, and I do. It's in the back of my truck right now, and I'm about to share it with you. I'm excited to have this thing. Um, I've wanted one of these for quite some time. Now, I do have the smaller version, much smaller version. Uh, but this is the large version, and I'm excited to have it. It's going to require a little bit of work to get back up and going, because it's set outside for a few years. But... You know, that'll be a fun job in itself. So let me bring you over here and I'll show you what I got. I'm excited to have it. I think it'll be great once we get the shop, you know, up and going. So any guesses as to what it is? So it's a large hydraulic press that appears to be in relatively decent shape, although it's got vines growing on it and has set outside for a while. It's going to use some... TLC to get her going to need some TLC to get it back up into shape. It's got a hand crank on this side to raise and lower the table. Here's the table which is sitting uh, crazy at the at the moment and it sets on a couple pins that go through the holes. It is air or hand pump and it's two speed. Let me get you around uh, to the front of the the business uh, part of it here and show you show you that and maybe a little better look at the ram itself. So I don't know how much better of a view that is, but as you can see, it's got two speeds for the hand pump. You can go high pressure or high speed. And then, like I said, um, it is also air powered to move that ram down pretty quick. It looks like it's got probably an eight inch throw is what I'm guessing on the ram, which appears to be probably a five inch OD on the body and then a three inch uh, on the ram or two and a half, something like that. Spring return. Uh, it has a pressure gauge on the other side, right? I can't show you that because you know, have to flip this thing over. And uh, I mean, it looks to be pretty much all here. I don't have the, the rod to operate these, but that's nothing. And uh, yeah, that's it really. It's just a big hydraulic press, which is awesome because I've wanted one of these for a long time. And uh, all I have is a much, much smaller version that doesn't have a through hole in the base, which this one does, so you can press something all the way through, like an arbor or uh, anything, for, for that matter. So I'm excited to have this. This is an important tool for me. Um, you know, I often go over to my dad's place and use his, um, but now I've got my own, which is nice. It'll take, like I say, some work to get back up and going. I don't hope water hasn't got into here and jacked up the mechanism, but, uh, you know, it was standing up outside. It wasn't laying down, so I'm, I'm optimistic that uh, you know it didn't get water in the hydraulic system. But we'll tear it all down, you know, clean it out, paint it, all that jazz. So I'm excited to have that. So I have got a major problem in here that I haven't addressed. I haven't talked about it because it really wasn't relevant till we got to this stage. But I want to share that with you along with my thoughts on what I'm going to do when it comes to bringing in concrete in here. Let's do that first, then we'll talk about the big problem. Now, I've pinned to the existing pad here every 15 inches, right, to tie the new and the old pad together. It probably would have been fine every 24, but whatever. We did every 15. I don't plan to put pins, concrete pins, in a rebar into the wall here because I don't think that's necessary with my setup. Because I've had a large trench all the way around that wall that I poured flowable fill into, which is a non-settling, basically cementitious mix. It's concrete, really, all the way along that wall and along the front and the back. So my pad, concrete pad, is going to be sitting on concrete that's sitting on top of the foundation, which means that the whole wall would have to move for this pad to move out at the end. So there's no reason to pin it, in my opinion. I am going to have expansion joint around there, but that's it. So the big problem that I face 
that I have to address is because they did such a horrible job on this concrete, you know, I'm not going to be able to screed, you know, level the top of my concrete out to this. Well, you could, but I'm unwilling to put all that air into my new concrete. This pad that I pour in here is going to be level and flat, at least to the best of my ability. Now, the good part of this is that the majority of the air in this original pad is from about the back of that dirt bike tire to the front of the shop. There's three inches of difference in between the back of the shop and the front, and the majority of it's up here. So I can screed to the top of the pad from the middle of the shop back, and my new wall for this area of the shop will be built on top of it, so you won't see it at all. But from about the middle up, there will be a height difference, and in some places up to three inches, so it'll be substantial. You know, this new pad will be higher than the old pad. But I think that I can address that, at least I believe that I can, by pouring a skim coat of concrete on the top of this old pad, just temporarily, right? It's a much better option than screeding to the top of this simply to avoid a lip and putting all that error into thousands of dollars of concrete, you know, when hopefully in the future I plan to come back and redo this anyway. And I would really hate myself if I put all that error into my new, new concrete to, just to avoid a lip. So that's the plan is to put a piece of sheet metal, you know, that's at the height of the pad all the way, you know, good and level, all the way at, uh, down the shop, at least from the middle of the shop up, piece of sheet metal to screed to. That way, this side's good and flat, good and level, and I can address this side with a skim coat maybe in the future. I don't know, give me your, your suggestions because I can use them, but I think that's what I can do to address this. End up with a good section of pad, and then, you know, worry about the their crappy work later. So as I've said before on rebar, I'm doing 40 times bar diameter on the overlap. Uh, this is more than that, but that would be your minimum overlap uh, for the bar to act as one continuous bar instead of two pieces when it's in concrete. So half inch bar, 40 times bar diameter would be 20 inches uh, minimum for that to you know, act as one continuous bar.
that looks pretty good, I think. Ended up doing a 15 inch center instead of a 24 inch center on my rebar spacing, like I said I was going to do last week. I bought extra rebar with the intention of doing an apron out front, but because I'm having to deal with all these inaccuracies in this floor, you know, I just decided to wait on that. Trying to match an apron up out in the front of the shop to you know, this pad, which is going to be higher than the existing pad, you know, just not the time to do that. I'll have to get this pad poured and then uh, cap this pad here and then maybe come back and do an apron. That's the thought anyway. So I brought in what extra rebar I had for that and put it in this floor because it's not a bad idea, right, to have extra steel in the floor, although 24 inches would have been, uh, you know, on the spacing would have been plenty. And I was going to do PEX tubing in this as well, but just complicates things and spreads out what already takes forever with the time that I have to work on stuff. So just decided against that as well. I'm just going to do conventional heating in here. Now, what I'm going to do here is just a piece of eighth inch sheet metal on that cut line stood up on end at the height that I want this pad to end up at. That way we can just screed to the top of it and this pad will be nice and level. Then I'll cap that side potentially in the future, uh, you know, when I can. So that's the thought anyway. I haven't dealt with capping a pad, but I know it can be done. So I'm going to have to really look into that and, uh, you know, get this done first, move my stuff over, get it all cleaned up, right? I'll be glad when I can do that and then, uh, you know, address that issue. But for now, that's it, I think. So that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, and subscribers, anybody who's supported me on this project. Much appreciated. Took me three days to get this uh, ground. Uh, to a point to where it was level enough to you know, get this where it's at. So, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. The birds fly so as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blow.